Slow moving. What? Inattentive. What? Dull. What? Shows a lack of motivation. What? Constantly snacking. This is funny because he's fat. Woo woo. Oh, derka derka derka. Ooh, where's Waldo? Nope. Nope. It'd be a lot easier without all these people. Nope. Nope. <gasps> it's there. Oh, Waldo, where are you? Open bar, dude. That ball hit hard. Stretch. Austin Jackson back looks up. You can't put it on the board. Yes. Back to back jacks. And it is 4 1. First. Old woman. Man. Ma'am. Sorry. What the hell's going on out here? We interrupt this program to annoy you and make things generally irritating. No way. We landed on the moon! I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Turn off the jet, kid! Guess what is a prick? I would like to extend to you an invitation to the pants party. Excuse me? The party. The pants with the pants. Party with pants. No, does not have the leg. And Chris Davis takes it in the back of the end zone. He'll run it out to the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45. There goes Davis. Oh, my God. Davis is going to run it all the way back. Auburn's going to win the football game. Auburn's going to win the football game. He ran the missed field goal back. He ran it back 109 yards. They're not going to keep him off the field tonight. Holy cow. Oh, my God. Good evening and welcome to the Beer Belly Sports Podcast. My name's Steve O alongside Mr. Geoffrey. And uh, boy, do we have a show for you guys today. We're going to be talking all kinds of good sports, uh, some Minnesota stuff, some local stuff, and uh, maybe we'll even uh, dive into some professional stuff. We'll see yeah. what happens today. Uh, it might get weird. It's a Beer Belly Sports Podcast. Uh, I have uh, a firm belief that this thing sounds better. If uh, you guys consume at least six beers uh, during the course of Why us not? recording this, and uh, it, which will just make our, our jokes funnier and uh, our our takes even hotter. So thank you for joining us. Uh, hello over on the Facebook page. Uh, we are Hello. live on that. And uh, here we go. Uh, Mr. Geoffrey, what do we got going on today? Well, let's see. We have, uh, we'll talk about Adam Thielen possibly staying with the Vikings. Uh, we'll talk about Bucks and could have a breakout season for your Minnesota Twins, and we'll play the spin the wheel of the quarterbacks. The wheel of the quarterbacks, which it could be very intriguing how that goes. I'm excited. And then uh, we'll do news of the weird, and then uh, if you have any news around the music world or WWE news, or yeah, <laughs> well, not yet. <laughs> uh, news of the weird, of course. Uh, what we learn today. All right. Well, let's start out with Adam Thielen. Uh, you were saying that he might be leaving Minnesota. Well, not really leaving. The Vikings are trying to you know, keep him around. I went for this dang thing to open up. Good he, thing. Good thing we have technology that works. <laughs> Adam Thielen. I feel feel like he was the bright spot of the receiving core. The only bright spot for the the Vikings this year. And a, a fun fact: I actually played against him. In Aww. college, he played over at Minnesota State, uh, so he hasn't. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, I guess I didn't really play against him because I didn't really play when he was playing. But uh, you know, uh, he was on the other team while I was on the other team. Uh, but that's, it's cool to see an NSIC guy making it in the league and a big time guy like Adam Thielen. I feel like if if the uh, Vikings don't pick him up, you know, he's going to make a huge impact well, of somewhere course, else. Somewhere he's going to make a huge impact. He came you know? in. What was it? 2000, I don't know, a couple years ago, 2000, he's 26. 13, so 2013 okay. is when he came in. Yeah, because you, because you would know. <laughs> I would, why, there we go, jingle <laughs> bells. Um, he, he had uh, 967 receiving yards in 2016, uh, his most receiving yards since the Brett Favre era when he hooked up with Sidney Rice back in 2009. So that's, you know, quite, yeah, that's a big deal, man. <laughs> it is a pretty big deal. I'm actually kind of shocked that the Vikings have not done anything. But you look at the running game, that's pretty much all they, that they do. Yeah, but now we, we've got Adrian Peterson, like, tweeting things. This is the craziest time 
of free agency Best in the history of sports, I feel. I Not agree. because there's a lot of people out on the market or there's the hot commodities, but I feel like uh, it's because of the way that athletes are going about like mm-hmm. saying that they're interested in teams with the onslaught of, of like Instagram and Twitter. Yep. Now, like there's people that just go out and they uh they just go and see what teams these athletes are are following or who's what teams are following what athletes on on twitter or instagram and then they're making up these wild accusations oh, yeah. that they're gonna be like <laughs> picked up by these teams you know he had um uh, who was the guys uh, that just like put up those eyeballs on a or, or Adrian Peterson a couple yeah. of weeks ago okay. talking to, with the Giants saying that the Giants are making some interesting things out there like yeah cool yeah like, oh, all right <laughs> well, like, I guess Adrian Peterson what? yeah is gonna be a uh, is gonna be a Giant I, I don't I don't see eh, that happening I don't I don't see that happening either that does not seem like one of those things that uh, that. Who what Ben McAdoo though? He's he, he's the coach of the Giants. I love that guy. You do what? I like that guy. <laughs> Thanks, Stone Cold. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I like that guy because he is just the weirdest head coach I think in the entire entire NFL. Um, because he he's the type of guy that well, um, like studies winning percentage on like how if the 15 mile an hour wind what direction it's going uh totally determines the way that they're gonna attack oh, yes, the offense it's very nice, sir. <laughs> <laughs> we figured out a new toy today so we're trying out this but uh, well i i had this toy for a while i was trying to use it last week but i'm dumb and i had the wrong settings in so we're i finally got everything you know for the most part we're doing the old uh raggedy way but regardless it's all working we're doing it we're doing it <laughs> um yeah i one of the things about AP and a lot of NFL players do, yeah, I doubt he's going to take less money in Minnesota, but he will take less money somewhere else. You ever notice athletes do that? Yeah, I I don't know. I don't know if he would take less money anywhere. Well, what's he making now? Uh, too dang much. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, Great cash, homie. <laughs> Randy Moss, baby. Um, yeah, you know, AP. He's such a it's he's in a weird time in his in his career where he really doesn't have a foot to stand on because they're always breaking um when he wants <laughs> when he wants to say, like say that he wants more money uh or even to be a hot commodity because he, what is he 30 he's Three? 33 32 Ish. years old and um a running back you know they always they're losing steps and those guys take more punishment than nearly anybody on the field. Correct. And uh, in one misstep for a running back, you lose that one step. That's yep. your one thing. Then yeah. you're just an average back at best. Well, there's not a lot of tread on running backs. Average, I think, was like average lifespan of a running back was like three to four years, maybe five. Really? Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, they're getting the hit. Superstars. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Like, uh, Emmett Smith is the last guy that I remember a boy. of uh, like being a longevity running back, and he was just a freak though. Like he he would do anything. He would, and that was that was why he he is the all time rushing leader now. Um, I was a little heartbroken when he ba- beat Walter Payton's record, and I brilliant. <laughs> but I know that no one is ever going to beat that record nope. again. Probably not. Because, like, other than AP, I can't think of a single running back in the league that's been around for more than 10 years. I think the next closest person could be Levante Bell for the Steelers. Okay. And now he's also in a contract negotiations. Yeah. I think it's his time's up. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, Big Ben, where he might be going. You think Romo. he's going to leave Pittsburgh? Yeah, there's, leave there's Pittsburgh? talk. There's talk he might retire, but we'll talk about that oh, later. okay. So there's that. He's been beat up a lot. But, oh. you know, a lot of – okay. I'll get, well, we digress like normal. Yeah, you know we we love derailing because that's <laughs> part of our life. Um, when he lost this last his last game was against Patriots or whatever. Yeah, uh, his press conference says like I don't know if I'm going to be here next year. I mean, hmm. he was just you know if you get beat up all season long, you're upset. Yeah, would, my mind frame would not be like oh yeah we'll see you next year. I'm, everyone puts so much quarter into like all these post game interviews mm-hmm. with. With players, especially after they lose, like the Cam Newton thing when they were like, oh, he's a sore loser. Well, you know, as I'd Vince be, Lombardi said, to show me a, a good loser and I'll True. show you a loser. Um, and it, I just, I don't like to, th- I, I like it when the, those guys are like, 
pissed off True. and they, they don't want to talk to the, the media because if I were in that position and I just lost a, a very high profile game mm-hmm. in front of millions of people and millions, <laughs> I wish we had that drop uh, um, next week. Don't worry about it. <laughs> next week. We're getting better. Um, I would, I would be like, get out of my face. I don't want to talk to you. I'm going to go sit on my couch and drink beer and watch wrestling. <laughs> Uh, and, and just cry. Like, Bert, that was Burt Reynolds' laugh, by the way. Oh, that's his laugh? Yeah. Good Smokey God. Smokey the Bandit. <laughs> don't make Burt Reynolds laugh. Uh, Nevermore. <laughs> <laughs> but I, like, I don't want to talk to the press. I don't want to talk to anyone, really, after I lose. All right. Let, let, let's ask you this. Okay. You play a lot more games than I have in football. True. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it sees the size of you and what you played and what you've done. Yeah. Have you ever been upset? After a game, after a big loss, you said, no, this, and I'm done. Mm. Have I ever said that? I've never said. To yourself. To myself? Yeah. Like, I never want to play again? Yeah. I I've mean, never like, said that. Okay. Well, that's um, I did almost quit after my um, my junior year oh. of playing, but that was because of injury and because I could barely walk up the stairs and I... I know exactly. No, oh my God! No, it, it was like I was bur- I was broken in half. Really? As God is my witness, I couldn't walk up the stairs. It was a tough a tough time in my life, and so I did have that feeling of like I don't want to do this anymore. I, I don't totally like understand. being yelled at for not being able to get into a stance or 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 whatever. Getting pushed around, yeah. Getting my brains bashed in for three hours a day, and Good times. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, but. In the end, my last game, I was just thinking about this the other day. Um, actually, last night, my last football game as my as my senior year, um, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, man, I remember I they had to pull the jersey off of me because I refused to take it off. Aww. So, uh, because, yeah, you know, it's it, the last time you're ever going to do something. Oh, I totally understand. It's totally taken away from you, and... And so I feel like that was the only time. That's terrible. Man, it's terrible. Yeah. And like, just. That's, that's, that's heartbreaking. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. It's tough. Uh, but I've never been like, after a loss, been like, I never want to play this game again because. So I, I, I don't know. I also haven't played professionally for 15 years. That's like, true, too. Like Ben has. Um, but I, I don't know. It's just a, a mindset thing. If, if he's, if that's what he was saying in the press mm-hmm. conference. I would say if they talk to him now, they have to ask those same questions. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure he, I have a feeling it's coming back. Uh, that's the heat of the moment type of thing. And, you know, Ben Roethlisberger is a pretty damn good quarterback. It always has been. Yeah. I've always liked him. Like, I've, just, I, I despite didn't the allegations really, of, you know, the things back then. Yeah, I didn't like certain parts of him, <laughs> I, but I liked him as a football player. I agree. And uh, if you just think about that, then you don't have to worry about anything else. I agree. Well, that's like most players. Yeah. I'm it- <laughs> See, I got my own drops too. I, I got this Kevin Owens doll because I'm a 27 year old grown up, and I can make my own decisions with my own money. And uh, so, I mean, it's like hello. <laughs> so we're gonna digress real quick. Um, I got my play, tag. You gonna play with him? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. He's gonna pop up, power bomb you through this table if you keep running your mouth like that. Well, hey, <laughs> hey, why don't you show him to our camera? See that little Kevin Owens right yeah, there. Kevin Owens. He's got. He's got things that he says. <laughs> and it's Whoa. great, and uh, so I'm pretty pretty stoked on that. Uh, but I I got my tax refund like last really? week. Yeah, and I was pretty pumped about it because I'm usually pretty poor. And uh, <laughs> same, <laughs> but you have kids. Yeah, well, <laughs> wait, that day but, will happen, and then you'd be like, <laughs> money? What's that? Well, hopefully, I make more money than I'm making now, so I won't have to <laughs> really be struggling. But um, I got my tax refund, and I was like, man, I feel rich. So I was like, I need to get some things from Target. So I go to Target, and I'm like, I got to get beard oil. I got to get body wash. I got to get beard oil. Is that what you just said? (laughs) Yeah. Nice. It's sweet, man. It really makes the thing shine. And then I was like, what else should I get? So I I go through uh, the toy department, and this WWE aisle kind of catches my my eye. I'm like, oh, cool. Kevin owns doll. Oh, it's 15 bucks. Heck, yeah. Sign me up for that. So then I, I'm like, you know what? I could I could go for some more things. So then I go through the clothing section and pick up a couple of shirts. I'm like, man, I feel feel good, feel good. And like <laughs> I, I barely spent any money. I've got millions 
and, and millions. millions of dollars to my disposal. I'm feeling good. By the way, when, when you start doing that millions things, I'm going to have it on point because our chemistry is going to be it's perfect. Gonna, it's going to be right there. Yeah, I can't we'll, wait. We'll gonna... And uh, so then I'm walking by the uh, the electronics aisle, and I was thinking to myself, Steve-O, don't, don't go in there. You know what will happen if you go in there, man. You're gonna you're gonna find something you really want. It's gonna be expensive, and you're not gonna you're gonna you're gonna feel bad about this. And uh, you know what I did? Do it. I went in there and I bought an Xbox One. Oh, it, yeah, I felt like okay. I, I've been looking at getting a gaming <sighs> system for the longest time, like two years. I've been like, I, you know what? I need one. I haven't bought a gaming system since I bought a PS2. What? A PlayStation 2. What are those? And uh, in like. <laughs> what are those? What are those? Uh, in like 2000. Like, man, I don't even. It, like, it was like a year after they came out. So they were like kind of cheap. And I bought that. That was the last gaming system that I bought. And uh, so I go in there and I'm talking to the guy and he goes, yep. So are you, uh, you upgrading? I'm like, To be honest, man, I, I haven't bought a gaming <laughs> system in a very long time. And he goes, Yeah, man, I just, uh, I got a 360. I just went up to the Xbox One. I'm like, Yeah, I, uh, I haven't bought one. I haven't, I haven't bought a gaming system since uh, the PlayStation 2. And he looks at me. <laughs> <laughs> and he yeah, goes, huh? all right, man. Well, I'm just going to be over here if you need anything. Just let me know. <laughs> I want to guess what uh, – did he have longer – no, he had shorter hair, kind of a younger guy. I don't know, I man. go on Target every day, unfortunately. I was I, uh, I was just looking at the Xboxes. And you know what was crazy? What's that? This Xbox One. It's got 4K um, resolution, 500 gigs of memory. Yep. You, got every, you can put all kinds of streaming apps. You can put your cable through it. Like, this thing is a freaking machine. Correct. And I bought it with a game, and it cost the exact same as when I bought a PlayStation 2 way back in the day. And I... Yes! <laughs> yes! Yeah. Yes! So I'm walking out. I'm like, yes! Finally <laughs> got it. And now I'm on, play, I'm on so Xbox happy. One. I was so just happy. And now, like, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, how the hell does that thing cost the same as a PlayStation 2 back in the day? This is it's just mind-blowing. And uh, so that's why uh, I think Ben Roethlisberger is a pretty good uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I'm going to tell you this, and we'll take a quick break. Um, okay. I'm at, I've, if I would have known you looking for an Xbox One, I would have gave you mine. Because I'm getting a PS4 in a couple days. Well, what the hell? Well, if I would have known, I was texting you about yeah. it. Ah. I was like, I was, I'm thinking about getting an Xbox, yeah. and you, you know what you sent me? You said, "Do it." And there is your dagger. Because that's the truth. That debatable. That's not debatable. I, oh, well, I'll if, go back. I'll go. Okay, find find your text. It was a Snapchat, so it's gone okay. forever. We'll just have to take my word for it because I have the best memory in the world. Uh, and uh, <laughs> you're going to give me an Xbox One. Come on. Give okay. Me. You you say you have the best memory in the world coming from a lineman. I can't remember. Old line. Yeah, that's why I thought. You better know what play is why. Go to oh, the left yeah. or go to the right. Or do Whoa. I have to okay. You are em- <laughs> entering a world of hurt if that's what you think. I shouldn't talk about that, being a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, you protect my skinny butt. I, if anyone comes in this door right now, it's all on you. you got to be elusive, man. Uh, I'm doing yeah, my job over Because everybody is bigger than me. And uh, not really a big fan of everybody being a lot bigger than me. Well, but, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's we'll talk a little bit more coming up in just a little bit. We have still talk about uh, Byron Buxton. Uh, we'll talk about our uh, but, but quarterbacks, spinning the wheel of quarterbacks, and we'll do our news of the weird, what we learn, and see if Steve has any news of music or WWE or whatever he wants to talk about because, you know, he's a big handsome gentleman over there. We got this. I've tried everything, and I just couldn't keep those extra 200 pounds off. It started to affect my marriage. She was too big for me. Then I'll sleep with anything. The abdominatrix, the thiazide, the tummy stapling. I've had my mouth sewn up, my hands chopped off. You name it, I've tried it. Yeah, except for exercising and eating right, Porky. That's right, honey. Then I found the Dormatron. Using a new technology called Biorhythmic Subconscious Gymnastics, the Dormatron exercises you while you sleep. Just strap in your arms and legs, put on the Dormatron headset, then wrap yourself in the special high-voltage electric blanket. Turn it on to 11 and burn those pounds away while you have a relaxing night's sleep. Now that I've lost 280 pounds, my husband's all mine again. That's right, honey. No more escort services for me. 
Don't be fat a day longer than you have to. Remember, being fat can even ruin a romantic cruise. Call Dormatron now at 1-800-SLEEP-OFF-LARD or visit www.sleepofflard.com and sleep your way to a thinner, happier you. Welcome back to Beer Belly Podcast. You know, Steve and I were kind of like, we were too used to like either taking over or like... Yeah, we're not sure who's the lead on this. No, not really. Um, but uh, I, I really, I'm digging the music that you got today. I, I, you're kind of kind of shocking me with this one. Wait, are you surprised I didn't pick country? Because I have plenty of that. No, no, I hate country. So please, for the love of God, never <laughs> play a country song or this will be the last episode of the Aww. podcast. Um, but the, this band we're playing, it's Alexis on Fire. And uh, they were one of the bands that when I was in high school really dug them. Uh, but one of my favorite parts about this band is that they're from Canada. And they're, and they're named um, after the only lactating stripper in Canada, Alexis Fire. <laughs> and that is the true story of how they got that name. Not like that some Alexis on Fire sounded cool. It was Alexis Fire was this lactating stripper in Canada they used to go to. That's brilliant. And uh, so they named their band after her. <laughs> so... There you go. Enjoy them. Yeah, enjoy that little tidbit. <laughs> All right, let's no see. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. What else have we got? We'll, we'll talk about... Uh, let me get the right thing up real quick first. Okay. We have to talk about Byron Buxton. He looks to have a... Supposedly a... He's poised to have a breakout season. Now, most of us who are pretty knowledgeable about Minnesota Twins, you know, unfortunately, we live in a... A state that is uh we live in a state everyone lives in a state oh, oh. except for people in washington dc different story different day okay um we live in a state that uh <laughs> all minnesota fans tremble this time of year it doesn't matter if you're a wild fan uh vikings fan a gophers fan because we all, we all expect the worst Twins well yeah we because we you've experienced the worst i have even being a cowboys fan the time. you being a cowboys fan i have experienced the worst you do and uh, that's a different story for a different day. But let's talk about uh, Byron Buxton. He's poised to have a breakout season. The Twins were so bad last year. The Byron Buxton, awesome September. Uh, it's It was pretty hard to remember. You know, Buxton hit a 277 with seven home runs, five doubles, two triples, uh, 18 RBIs last September, feeling the hype for the 2007, uh, 2017. Yeah, he, there's, they're saying that he might have a – a breakout year. He's a former number one or number two pick. Was that about two, three years ago now? I think he was. But uh, still, for for you not really being a you know avid Twins fan, you're more of. A- I'm actually looking up every piece of information about Byron Buxton right now. Are you? Yeah. Oh, because yeah. I'm trying to get back into this whole thing. Um, get back into the sports <laughs> I world. Don't, I don't really know anything about this guy. Well, all right. Defensively, great. He is amazing. Offensively. Mm, he's yeah. he's suspect. I mean, he is, r- uh, he's pretty debatable <laughs> about uh about hitting. I mean, there, there's people like in AAA who can do a much better hitting, but he is uh really good defensively. I mean, he had a hell of a uh, hell of September. You know, September is when they usually call uh, have big call ups from their AAA. Yeah, but getting hitting two seventy seven, seven home runs, five doubles, and two triples. Uh, and 18 RBIs last September, you know, it shows promises, but I, eh, I really don't know. And it's hard to say how these twins are going to go. I just have a feeling that it's going to be another bad season. Yeah. I just, uh, I'm looking up some of the stats. It goes through his first 107 big league games and 326 at bats. He hit 199, three homers, 19 walks and 124 strikeouts. Yeah, that is depressing. Let's go! Ha ha ha! That's, just kidding. It's so that is just no it's bad. Good, man. It's horrible. Um, over his final twenty nine games and one hundred thirteen plate appearances, though he hit two eighty seven with a three fifty seven on base percentage. Not all that good for a speedy guy. True. And a six fifty three slugging percentage. Um, I guess he the the title. Of this is like he found himself. He went back to uh, where he he began. Um, he was a top prospect in two thousand twelve. And uh, yeah, speedy guy. 
It'd be nice to see a, a good leadoff for the the Twins. Uh, last time we had a good leadoff was uh, Denard Span. Dennard. Dennard. <laughs> what? Where did he go? The Phillies. Uh, Nats. He went to the Nationals. Oh yeah. I think about that. But he was really good too. I mean, we traded him away and. Someone else with the Yankees. I don't remember his name because you know I'm not all knowledgeable in sports anymore. You know, we we are the beer league of uh, sports. We're the beer league of sports podcasts. Yeah, we have, we, <laughs> we have a thing called just half ass everything. But the good thing is that we got a pretty big ass, so uh, we uh, we got that going for us, right? Yeah, you're right about that. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day, nor was this podcast. <laughs> We're working on it, though. Yeah, slowly but surely get yeah. back into the wonderful sports. Um, do you want to play the Wheel of Quarterbacks? I would, I would very much like to do that. Okay. Hey, I like the music. All right. Well... This is actually from... The following segment is brought to you by Splenda. (laughs) Splenda! Buy it. It won't melt your brain. (laughs) Wink, wink. (laughs) All righty. Let's take a look at a couple quarterbacks that we have. Uh, There's quite a few of them. I'm not going to go through every one of them because I have a feeling... Let's just do it rapid fire. Rapid fire. Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. People want him more than Cam Newton. I think that uh, he's a pretty decent quarterback. Do you think he will stay in Washington, or do you think he'll go to a different team? Stays in Washington. He loves it there. I agree. Uh, Mr. Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler is out of Chicago, and he is going to either go to Cleveland for a conditional pick, or he is going oh. to uh, he's going to go to one of those California teams, one of the L.A. or uh, San Francisco teams. I'm there, undecided as to which one. There's been talk that he might retire. Not also a bad idea. Yeah, might as well. He has a hot wife and beautiful kids. <laughs> I love how that's your, that's your uh, your go to for quarterbacks. Like, what do they want to play for? They got a hot wife, <laughs> millions of dollars. Why do you want to keep playing? <laughs> All right, next. Who, who do we got next? Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Harvard. Fitzpatrick. Beautiful beard. Great beard. I mean, he would rock the beard any time of year. I'm jealous of how grizzly that man's beard is. What, what's our question about him? Uh, yeah. Do you think he will go anywhere? Do you think he will stay at the Jets, or do you think he will end up going somewhere else? Ooh, the Jets, the dumpster fire of the AFC. Um, <laughs> Ouch. I would say, um, oh, man. Uh, does he go somewhere other than the Jets? Yes. All right. Do you want to take a stab at a different team? Where do I think he's going to go? Yeah. Man, I don't know. Where do you think he's going to go? I don't know, but nowhere with Jets. Yeah. Free agency. That's about it. <laughs> no one's going anywhere with the Jets. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> so he just might stay with the Jets. He has a big-ass contract. I think he'll be. Oh, yeah. Didn't he just get signed there like two years ago? Something like that. So, yeah, he has a big contract. I doubt they're just going to like up and leave right yeah. now. Maybe next year. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo. He's going to go to the Bears. Well, the Bears? I think so. Oh, that's it. And good the Bears pick. are going to give up something ridiculous for him. Unfortunately. And uh, it's going to be funny because uh, then that person's going to turn into, like, next Tom Brady somehow. Aww. And Garoppolo is going to be, like, Jim McMahon. That could be. Good for, like, two years, and then he gets headaches <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> uh, Robert Griffin the third. Where do you think he's going? Oh. He's staying in Cleveland, man. He's gonna bring so? him. He's gonna bring him to the promised land. Stop it! I I firmly believe in Robert Griffin the third. Um, I don't think that his legs are worthy. I think of uh, being the great quarterback that he could be. Well, but uh, you know, he's got Joe Thomas, man. Best offensive who? lineman in what? <laughs> I'm just kidding. What? Um, best offensive lineman in the league. All right, Colin Kaepernick. Uh, he's gonna go on a college lecture tour. About um, <laughs> how to destroy a brand in under 30 days. All right. Uh, Brock Osweiler. Osweiler. The wheeler. The dealer. The Oswheeler. From uh, Arizona State, who also has a really hot wife. I isn't he like 6'10", too? He's, he's like huge. 6'6". Yeah, he's a big guy. 6'10", I don't know about that. Well, he's close to 6'10". Well, you're he's what, like 6'7". Are you, you're 6'5", right? I'm six, like 6'3". So no, you're not. I'm 6'3". Yeah. I am. Me too. Aw. Yeah, we're we're so we're like the same person. Aw. Except for I eat more. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you could probably eat a small child. Um 
That's not one. <laughs> I don't want to eat any human ever. Um, but Osweiler, where's he? He's at the Broncos, right? No. Or is he was. with the Texans? Texans. Ooh. Um, you know what? I think he's going to go away for a year, and then he's going to come back uh, in 2018, and he's going to have a, be the NFL Comeback Player of the Year. By the way, he signed a six-year million dollar, or a six-year deal last year for a hundred and some million dollars. Yeah, I think he's going to be a uh, a fifteen million dollar backup for this year, and then he's going to have the comeback year. Alrighty, the wonderful man Tony Romo. Tony Romo is going to retire and become a coach. I'm fine with that, and. For me, being a Cowboys fan, I've wanted him gone two, three years ago now. Okay. So I'm totally fine with this move. He should retire. He should. He should be a coach, though. He's a, He's got a good eye. Yeah. And he's also has a hot wife. And he's got a hot wife with kids. Yes. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm trying. I'm looking and going through the rest of the... Uh, I wonder if there's an NFL quarterback with an ugly wife, because then he should just keep on playing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe make more money. I can find someone else. All right. Last but not least. Oh, boy. Blake... Bortles. Blake Bortles. Uh, he's with Jacksonville, right? Correct. He's going to stay with Jacksonville. You think so? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. He's a, what is he, University of Southern Florida, not Southern, but Central Florida? I think he's a Central Florida guy, yeah. Yeah, so I think he'll probably stay there. Yeah. It makes sense. He's a hometown boy, area. <laughs> I don't know about hometown, but Where area. is Jacksonville? I don't even know. <laughs> Other than Florida, I know that. Uh, south somewhere of Florida? Oh. Wow. My geography. I used to be really good at geography, but I'm just <laughs> terrible at geography. Okay. But, yeah, uh, let's take a quick break. We'll come right back. We'll have a lot more on the Beer Belly Podcast coming up next here on the Beer Belly Podcast Radio Network. Do you live in the boring suburbs but dream of living in a lonely castle on a windswept moor? Do you long to trade in your sweatsuit for a hundred pound suit of armor and swap your SUV for a noble stallion? Do you eat microwave dinners all the while wishing you were roasting a suckling pig at a pagan banquet? Is your next ideal home improvement a moat? Well, get ready, Liberty City! This weekend and every weekend at Liberty City Park, it's the Medieval Millennium Fair. Our band of traveling minstrels, knights, and maidens oh so fair are ready to delight you with tales of the Black Death, witch burnings, and the joy of being a feudal serf. Forget about air conditioning and modern medicine. We've got all the leeches, spells, and potions you need at the Medieval Millennium Fair. Learn the art of cooking with turnips. Yum, yum. Buy genuine reproduction medieval artifacts, including maces, double-handed battle swords, and one-size-fits-all chain mail. And this weekend only, pick up an authentic mechanical Lady of the Lake in Excalibur. It's perfect for your garden pond or swimming pool. And learn how to rid your condo of vermin using a a penny whistle and a mysterious prancing German named Hans. The Medieval Millennium Fair every weekend at Liberty City Park. Welcome back to the Beer Belly Sports Podcast. We are rocking here and we're talking some uh, some good sports. Um, I. You know, we were talking about that. We did the wheel of quarterbacks before, and uh, we'll talk about some weird wire news in the in the meantime. But Correct. I really want to talk about this story because I feel like this man is the hero that sports needs right now. Yes, not so much that we want, but we definitely need uh, this backup goalkeeper in England. Uh, he actually got forced to retire or to resign from the team. He didn't retire, but he might have to. Um, this man is an absolute hero and a national treasure, and uh, I hope that the Queen elects to knight him after this. He was a backup goalkeeper, and at halftime, <laughs> he uh, he hopped over the fence and grabbed himself a mince pie at the pub. And, what's wrong with uh, that? I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what's wrong like a with great that. idea. So I could go for one of those right now. Yeah, I agree. And uh, so he, <laughs> he went up there, had a pie, took a couple pictures with uh, some fans, and then uh, halftime was over, so he went back down, had the leftover pie with him. He finished the pie. It caused a national, international news about this. Bruh. And um, and then I guess he was forced to resign from the team. Boo. Yeah, boo is right. You know, I'm not a big fan of British uh, people. Hello. Um, but uh, I will say that uh, they do uh, need to give that man a break and give him uh, his job back because that is the hero 
of sports that I firmly believe in. We salute you, yeah, sir. Like he's a, a real man of genius, as, uh, as Bud <laughs> Weiser used to say. Um, like he's a backup. He's a backup. Yeah, what is he going to do? What is he going to do? He's a backup goalkeeper. When have you ever heard of a goalkeeper getting hurt that's like or a, needing him to be taken out? That's like a third string quarterback. When are you going to need him? Right. Exactly. And I just, you know, I wish that I could have, I could have been there for him. And uh, and been like, you know what, man, I'm here for you. Uh, I do want to send out my uh, my condolences on his soccer career ending abruptly. But um, you know, if he if he is looking for work, uh, we can't pay you, but you can come yeah, on, you come hang the, out with come us, come hang out for the podcast. We'll even give you a mic, yeah. and uh, maybe I don't, well, you know, who knows? Yeah. Did you eat a lot of paint chips when you were a kid? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> Chris Farley, man, R.I.P. in peace. Um, all right, so that that I believe is the sports hero of the week. We'll try to do well, that. Yeah, like that I think like that's uh, that's going to be a new segment is the sports hero of the week. Um, so I'll try to find one of those every single podcast. So listen up for that. Yeah, it'll be like one of those random type things. Just like now, we just pretty much made up a random segment right on the spot. Perfect. Well, we're really good about that I, winging things. I think so. It is a done deal. Done dealio. All right, let's see what do we have next. I believe we have. Uh, let's see news. Of the weird. Let me get my wonderful sound. Phenomena. There we go. There we go. Nice little bed behind there. Once again in January, Curtis Lee, uh, Curtis Lee got the bed. Or, here we go. This is this is going to be tough. Yeah, it is. You know, my wonderful dyslexia is going to kick it in here. Curiosity got the better of a perp. Andrea Salas, 26 years old. Allegedly stole a truck in Jonesboro, Arkansas, and drove it to Fort Smith, which is 260 miles away, but then couldn't resist stopping by a local sheriff's office to ask whether the truck has been reported stolen. Ooh. That's, uh, that's... Ballsy. Yeah, that's, uh, that's really not a smart idea. Any, uh, would-be thieves out there, let me just tell you this. Avoid the police. At all costs. Literally, that is yeah. the person you are running from. You ever seen Breaking Bad? Avoid the police at all costs. <laughs> well, except for Walter White. Or just okay. keep the enemy as close as possible. Yeah, well, he was I- trying to be so overt, it was covert. <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> all right. Next, I got one more. One and, more. Then you can do because I know. You, you, I got one too. Got so one too? Okay. yeah, you get this a, one. A 24 year old woman who worked at a <laughs> true. A 24 year old woman who worked at a. Uh, at a factory in Russia, I'm not going to say the name of the town because I'm going to absolutely butcher it. Okay. Uh, was killed this, in December when she fell in a vat of chocolate. Sad. I know. Some witnesses say that she was pouring flour when she fell. Others say she fell while trying to retrieve her phone. <laughs> Which I can see that too. I think the question that I have on that is, did they keep that badge of chocolate, and can I buy some? Yeah, because that seems like a um, a Walter, not Walter, uh, Walka, Ch- Willy wow, Walka. Want to try that again? Oh, Take man. two. There we go. Idiot. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Culture re- references are tough. Okay, my friends, I have found our uh, our local drunk board of the week. Nice. Um, <laughs> the, this lady. In uh, in Al- New Mexico, I'm not sure what town. Probably we'll just say Albuquerque because that's like the whole state, right? Yeah, that sounds right. All right. So she uh, fell asleep in her car after a, a hard night of partying, and uh, the cops came up and gave a little on the window. She woke up, and they're like, uh, "Ma'am, we're going to need you to step out of the vehicle." And they uh, smelled booze on her, so they performed a field sobriety test on her. Now this is where it gets awesome. Ooh. Instead of doing like what you're supposed to, which is like walk in a straight line or say the ABCs backwards, which by the way is a Can't very tough do. thing to do sober, so I don't know like why they would ask that. Uh, but anyways, uh, she got out and was uh, staggering around, and they're like, "You seem pretty drunk." And she goes, "If I was so drunk, could I do this?" And then performed a couple of cartwheels. Oh. Um, it was all caught on one of the cops' body cams. Very funny. Unfortunately, one of the cops decided to turn away from her, and uh, she did a, uh, a cartwheel and went right into him, hit him in the back. Uh, and uh, so instead of being like, wow, that was kind of the funniest field sobriety test I've <laughs> ever done, these cops decided that they're going to arrest her and charge her with aggravated DUI. 
Uh, and also, um, a, she got fined for an expired license plate of all Boo. things. So, uh, anyways, uh, that 23-year-old lady, uh, I'm pulling for you. Again, if you uh, are looking for some work, we can't pay you, but we'll give you a microphone. I'd love to hear your side of that story. Correct. All right, that's going to do it for News of the Weird. Perfect, because that song just ran out with 10 seconds left. Perfect. <laughs> uh, let's see. I uh, want to do our what we learned today, or do we have anything else we want to talk about? I have one last thing that I want to talk about, All right, let's and that it. is a controversy, I believe, in the culinary world. <gasps> and uh, that is, people think that uh, it's they think it's okay to put pineapple on pizza. Whoa! I, I am a firm disbeliever. In, we are going to have a major debate here. We are, and I'm okay with that because you're wrong. You're wrong. I am not wrong. I am very much in the right on this. Erroneous. <laughs> well played on that. <laughs> um, pineapple on pizza is kind of like not good. Okay, how is it not good? It's terrible. How is it good? Tell me how. It has a little sweetness to it. Sweetness? I don't want sweetness on my pizza. Ladies like pineapple. Well, I don't care what they want. <laughs> this is my pizza. I mean, and it all came from the, the other thing. This uh, the Icelandic president uh, found out recently. He went out and said that he wanted to ban people putting pineapple on pizza because he is of right and sound mind. And uh, he found out earlier what? today that uh, he you, uh, he actually doesn't have the political authority to be able to do that. Well, kind of figure which is unfortunate. I feel like if what? you're if you're the president of Iceland, you should be able to tell people that they can't put pineapple on their pizza because how the hell are you getting pineapple in Iceland? It's a damn island. Probably costs a little bit in more. In the middle of nowhere and it's frozen with volcanoes and hot springs and stuff. I think that's Greenland because Greenland is full of ice and Iceland's full of green. No, it's not. Iceland is a freaking tor- is just yeah. volcanoes. Yeah. And it's frozen, and there's a little bit of green. However you say, Rajaslag, or whatever, the capital. Beautiful place. Vikings are from there. But they should not be able to put pineapple on their pizza. I am a firm believer in that man's overstepping of his uh, his political power. Why is pizza, Why is pineapple on the pizza even acceptable in the world? Pineapple and cheese? Gross. Get out of my life. Pineapple and Canadian bacon. Ugh. How? No, Canadian bacon, first of all, is just ham. Let's just clarify okay. that for yeah, all those okay. people Okay, that's home. fine. But uh, let's see. Next Wednesday, you're going to – I'm going to get you a Hawaiian pizza. Mm-hmm. And you're going to eat it. No, not no. one not one slice, not two slices, the whole damn thing. Well, I'm not going to even look at it. If I see pineapple on my pizza, I won't even pick it off. I, I just won't even eat the damn pizza. This is part of your food. No. No, okay. I okay, eat, the, I eat weird food because that is weird, weird to you. Yeah, because the weird tastes good. That weird does. You not had taste sardines good. the other. I had oysters and they were disgusting. And <laughs> I would rather have more canned oysters than a single piece of pizza with pineapple on. it. Oh my god! No, god. get out of my life what? with pineapple. It is gross. But why is pineapple good when it's hot? That's that just it makes me feel uncomfortable you're, eating a hot fruit. You ever had? Uh, what the hell is it called? Grilled pineapple with uh, cinnamon sugar on it? No. Do it. No. You will love it. No, I won't. If I supply the pineapple and cut it, well, I probably won't cut it because I suck. Um, <laughs> you really sold it there, man. I know. I got to see the better half of it. <laughs> um, if it gets cut and grilled and with cinnamon on it, will you eat it? I'll try it, okay. but I won't taste it on pizza. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Not on pizza. Just by itself. So... You're agreeing with me in the fact that pineapple on pizza is no, no, a no-go. No, go. no, 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 no. I'm no. not agreeing with you. With that. Yeah, so what are you saying? Am I right? No, you're not right. I'm saying that pizza on pineapple is fine. I'm not saying it's the best pineapple thing in the world. Pineapple on pizza? Yeah, I don't know why I said. That would be weird if it was pineapple <laughs> or pizza on pineapple. That would be a big piece of pineapple. It would be. Anyways. Mm. <laughs> Anyways. Good thing to think about later. Don't Don't come at me with your fruit on my pizza. So if I put cherries or strawberries on it? No, you. Okay. What? No, get the what? Pa- no, that is the most egregious thing I have ever heard in an entire lifetime of egregious things that I've heard. Well, I'm pretty good about that kind of stuff. So you disgust no, me. Oh God! No. This work for you? Please, no, 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 no. That's that's me. Whenever I like, people are like, oh, I got Hawaiian pizza. No, 
Get out of my life. Just flip it. This like is, every once you got to flip a table. That's probably one of the things you would flip. But I just don't have time for those type of people in my life. I'm sorry. Well, you should be. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else you want to talk about? I would you, just you, like to you, inform, you feel better? Ev- let everyone know that I'm right. And if you disagree with me, hit me up in the comments, and I will prove to you that you are wrong. Whatever. All right. This is a good tune to end I know. On, huh? I used to have this all the time. All right. Uh, what we learned today, Steve, what did we learn today? We learned that uh, the quarterbacks in the NFL, if you Garbage. have a hot wife, you are going to stay put. Heck yeah. Uh, what I learned today is uh, that's a lot of hot quarterback wives out there. <laughs> Uh, and I learned that you don't like pineapple on pizza. I am very, very anti-pineapple on pizza. You broke my heart. Well, someone had to. Well, I'm used to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what else did we learn today? Is that about uh, it? We learned, uh, w- well, we learned about Adam Thielen and oh, that, yeah. uh, that we think that he should stay in Minnesota. That yeah. is literally our one point that we talked about for and 30 minutes. And we totally minutes. forgot about it. Yeah. We derailed on three other things. Yeah. We learned that uh, my brain sometimes skips a beat, and then we're talking about something else. <laughs> <laughs> well, so do I. All right. Uh, let's see. We talk about Byron Buxton. Supposedly, we have a good season. Might have a good season. I learned that Byron Buxton is a person, <laughs> and he's fast. And apparently, he's fast and has a very <laughs> high tendency of striking out. Well, that'll happen, you know. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Oh, I'm also I'm still working on the uh, oh. the uh, softball uh, home run oh, challenge. home run derby. Yeah, we're actually going to do that. We are. I'm waiting for obviously until it gets warmer. Yeah. And uh, don't worry, we'll have beer. We'll have your beer because you know where I get it. <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> I'm all on board about that. And uh, we'll invite as many people as possible because I have plenty of softballs. Okay. So good. don't worry about that. And I got plenty of bats. <laughs> so don't worry about that. Okay. Just don't break my hundred fifty dollar bat. I literally was not worried about any of that. Okay. So I'm well, glad that you eased my worries. Well, good. Uh, Justin also <laughs> more likely will join us. Hopefully, for just for the the home run derby. Yeah, well, yeah. he might be a reoccurring guest. More, We're not uh, sure. Yeah, he kind of had a little things things to say, but no, he's fun though. <laughs> he, he's at the, he's at the X right now, unless he's watching right now, which I would totally be. I don't know if he's watching right now. If you're so watching either. right now, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks, Justin. He's at the X right now, doing <laughs> oh, yeah. you know doing work. You got did, did you get a snap this morning at like six in the morning? I was passed out at so 6 in the morning. I was working. I tell you that I got home at 5.45 this morning? Nah. That sucked. Sounds like it would. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us today. We'll talk to you next week here on the Beer Belly Sports Podcast. Bye. 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 It was very strange. It was very weird. It was peculiar. It was kind of amusing. Yes, it was rather funny. It was incredibly funny. I loved it. Hilarious. Wonderful.